Hi guys, I'm Tom Frampton from Mastering the Mix, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to master this mix and get it sounding great for release. So it has a couple of pretty horrible issues that we're going to try and fix, has some tonal balance issues, some resonance issues. I'm going to show you how to use a reference track to guide your decision making, and we're going to jump straight into it. Let's take a listen to begin with. So it's quite difficult to make any decisions at this point without getting some kind of frame of reference. So the first thing I'm going to do is load in a reference track that I think is sonically the target that we're going to shoot for here. So it has to be something that's in the same genre, similar instrumentation. What's really important is that I loop the section of the track that has the lowest lows and the highest highs. So the drop, if you will, and do the same on the track that I'm mixing as well. So now we're going to compare these two. So straight away, we can hear that the reference track is much brighter. And before, it was kind of difficult to understand what was going wrong with the mix. You know, where do we want to take it in the, the first few things we wanted to do with the track? By listening to a great sounding reference track, you now have a direction of where you want to take it sonically. So what's really important here is that reference has level matched the track. So it's giving us a fair comparison. So, and I've also got the level line here in reference, and this is telling me the exact EQ changes that I need to make to my mix to get it sounding like the mastered reference track here. So let's take a look at that. So I've just frozen that there so we can see that we want to take off a little bit of the lows around three decibels. And then as we get up to 1K and 10K, it's almost up to plus 10 decibels. Now, in most scenarios, you might say, let's try and fix this in the mix because it's such a big change. But sometimes you don't have that option. Let's start by getting limiter up and we're just going to get a, a rough loudness level to kind of bring it up to the level that we want to push it to. So we're going to push this track to minus six short term laughs. So again, I'm looping the loudest section of the track and I'm going to click analyze here on limiter. So I've got these targets here in Limiter. It's showing me that this is the kind of gain range if I want to be within the targets listed here. And so that's kind of on the louder side. The attack, this has given me, this has analyzed the audio and given me a suggested attack setting based on the transient. So this is nice and open, nice and dynamic. And the release will keep that to auto because this adapts to the music as it comes in and out. And the link, this one is more subjective. So at zero, I'm limiting the left and right channels separately, whereas at 100%, I'd be, I'd be limiting them at the, at the same time. Now, this is showing me a target here up um, near to 100% linking. I don't wanna do that because I wanna give it a bit more loudness. So this one is, if you want transparency and loudness, zero is absolutely fine. And we've got the ceiling at minus two, so that's absolutely fine. So this is quick settings to get it up to the correct loudness. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the resonant issues that I can hear in this track. Because when I'm listening to the reference track, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that something's not sounding quite right. There's something quite fatiguing about this mix. So we're going to jump into that now. So let's, again, get that frame of reference. There are tonal balance issues in there as well that are kind of sticking out to me more, but let's fix those resonances first. So I'm going to fire up our plugin Rezo and I'm going to use the sweep feature here. So this is going to highlight any awful resonances that are poking out from the mix. So those are the ones that are kind of sticking out to me and I can listen to the delta of those of what they're outputting. Awful. So that's what we're getting rid of. So 
This one is particularly awful, so I'm just going to hold control and I'm going to lower the threshold. The position of these nodes shows it's the point at which no audio goes above that node at this threshold. So this one is at 1071 hertz and it's got a Q of 23. And each, each node has a Q that's optimized for its frequency. The higher up we go, the higher the Q, the more transparent the processing is. So here we have this one. I can adjust the Q if I need to by scrolling, but 23 is pretty good. That works well at this frequency and that's sounding about right. And I want to hit the I want to get the threshold just enough so it's reducing the resonance but without notching out too much of the sound itself. That's alleviating that fatiguing harshness in a very transparent way. Just There's just five nodes in there just taking the edge off the sound. So now we're going to jump into the tonal balance. So I'm going to fire up Mix Room and I'm going to use the reference track that we have here to create the target. So I'll open up the targets here in the bottom left and I will load in that reference track and I'm going to loop the same section so that we can analyze the tonal balance of this part of the reference track and we're going to compare it to, again, the drop of our mix. So let's do that now. I'm going to click Create Targets and it's going to analyze both. So this is giving me a suggestion of really, really boosting the top end here. That's what I was also seeing in reference. We, we saw that kind of nine decibel boost. So we're going to match up the green line on the walls of Mix Room here with some of these bands. And this is your kind of starting position. So now that's going to, that will have increased the gain. So I'm going to reduce the output. Now, if we compare that to the reference track, let's see if we're any closer sonically. So now we can see that in terms of tonal balance, now we're 0 0.5 off the sub. So perhaps we can just notch the sub out a little bit. Around the mids, we're super close. And now it's suggesting just a minor boost around two kilohertz of 1.5 to two decibels. But otherwise we're really flat. We're very comparable. Considering that there's different kick samples going on, there's different bass samples, uh, bass, bass patches using different hi-hats. You know, there's, there's different things going on. So to be so comparable sonically to the reference track is a really positive point at this stage. We've only made a couple of moves, but we're heading in the right direction, certainly. One of the other things I can do here is I can listen to the stereo width and compare the two. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll just get rid of this. Just I'm hitting control there to just uh, freeze the level line. And I'm going to get the stereo width showing. So we're going to jump between them now and see the difference between the reference track and our original track that we're working on. <laughs> You can see the difference. So in the reference track, it, the, the stereo width is showing a wider space. And when we come to our track, it's a bit more condensed. So what we can do is we can boost the side channels to increase the stereo width. You don't want to do anything too fancy here because you can, you can introduce phase issues into your mix when you start doing strange stereo width adjustments. So we're going to try and be very transparent here. So I'll take what we've got here in Mix Room. I'm going to set these bands more on the stereo side. So I'm going to move those across with 100% side, 20% mid, especially in these two ranges here, because this is where it was um, mostly showing that the stereo width was more in our reference track. And I might introduce another band. So I'll double click here to create another band in Mix Room. Whoops. Create another band in Mix Room. I'm going to capture it there, bring it up. I'm going to make this one a mid band only, and I'm going to add another little boost. So I've got a little bit of mid, a little bit of side boosting going on. We bring that down to one there, and then there was one at the 2K range as well. So I'm going to create another band, and I'm going to set this to mid and a bit of a boost. And let's hear how that sounds. So I'm not completely matching up against the green target on the side. I'm, that was our starting point, and we're moving to what I think is going to sound better in the context of this. 
So the stereo width seems to be much more comparable now and the level line is telling us that the tonal balance is much closer. pretty much flat there now. So now let's dive into the low frequencies and make those final little adjustments. We can do the similar, uh, similar process here for Bass Room where we load in our reference track and we use that as a sonic target to make sure that my gain is the same. It's loudness match before and after just so I'm not fooled by the track being louder and me thinking that it sounds better. Again, let's, uh, we'll compare it as well now to the original mix and see how it's transformed along the way so far, all we've done is add Rezo, Mix Room, Bass Room, and Limiter, and then fire it into reference here. It's level match, so it's gonna be a nice fair comparison. like unveiling a blanket off the speakers, especially when you compare it to the reference track. It's nice and sonically very close. That original mix had all sorts of problems. So now we're going to export this mix and we're gonna do a final quality control test on this. So this whole process is fairly straightforward. There's much more that you can do with mastering. You can do more stereo adjustments. You can do, uh, you can add saturation and distortion if you wanna add character to the track. You can keep it nice and transparent like I've done here. There's plenty more that you can do. Now, and that just depends on what your goals are or what the artist's or producer's goal is and what's right for the music. One of the final things we wanna do here is just test it in Expose. And I'm gonna drop the file in and we're gonna get some data on the technical details. So let's see. So here we can see Expose is showing me that there's a little section here where the loudness is minus 5.7. So that goes above my normal limitation of minus six. I'm usually shooting for around minus six during the loudest section of the song. Now, if I just loop, for example, the sections around that, not including it, it gets to minus 6.2. So because it's just a minor difference of 0 0.3, maybe I'm okay with that. And there's also a point in the song here where there's a left-right balance, but it's so insignificant that it's not showing up. So that's absolutely fine. So here we have Compare EQ. This is now comparing it to the reference track. So what I'll do is I can add in the same way that we did reference before. I'll add the reference track here. It's gonna analyze the audio and we're gonna see how it compares. So this is telling us how our track differs from the reference track. So our version actually has a little bit more high end. So I could essentially bring down the three kilohertz amount by three decibels or so, and that should actually level it out a little bit more. I can see the difference in mid and side. So there's a lot, I have a, I, this is, there's a lot higher frequencies in the reference track in the high, uh, in the high end there in the side channels. So there's a few things I can change here. I could, I am still within plus minus three decibels. So I'm very close sonically to the reference track. I might choose to bring this down though. That seems to be a good idea. I'll go back into the project. I'll just look at mix room. And I'll bring the three kilohertz range. I'll just bring that down by a few decibels. And let's hear how that sounds. <laughs> Don't 
just taking the edge off the high frequencies there a little bit. So now when I render that, we'll probably get a, a much better reading there. So that is how to master a track in a nutshell. We're just focusing on the very fundamental elements there of taking out the resonances, uh, getting the tonal balance sounding great and constantly using a reference track to make sure that we're moving the track in the right direction. There was lots of bypassing going on and level matching to ensure that at every stage when I'm using these EQs, I, I want to know that I'm making positive progress. So we're, we're constantly level matching, we're constantly bypassing and that's helping us make better decisions at every single step. And then getting the loudness right is, is straightforward with limiter, making sure that you're within the range suggested by the targets. And if, if you change things along the way, you add a compressor, you add saturation or whatever, things can change so you can just reanalyze. So let's do that again now and make sure that everything's on point. So here we have a, just with that small section there that wasn't going above minus uh, six decibels. So that was totally fine. And we were a little bit loud in some sections. So maybe I will bring that, we saw that in exposed. So I'll bring it down to 10.5 just for good measure. And that keeps us well within the range. These have all remained the same as well. So that's totally fine. It's a straightforward process. And the more you go through this process, the more you'll learn about how a good tonal balance can can come into your track because the reference track will always teach you the steps that you need to make to get your song sounding more like it. So as long as you're using reference, it will guide you to understand those changes that are needed. And so you can replicate that master after master after master. And things become a lot more straightforward and a lot easier once you've practiced with lots of material. So I hope this was really helpful. I hope this process is something that you can replicate in your own setup. And I hope that it helps you get your mixes sounding really great and your masters sounding polished and ready for, for release. Thanks so much for watching.